is Linda. And I'm Linda. How are you? And we're reading to the Bible, the New International Version, in uh, one year, in along with the schedule with uh, with this magazine, Our Daily Bread. And uh, we are now on day 59. And we're and reading we, chapter 20, Water hey, from the Rock. How come you took the Bible from me? I was going to read first. I'm going to read first this time. You did it last time. Anyhow, what's happened is, God took the Israelites out of Egypt, and they got over over a two-year period. They got over to the Jordan River. They spied out the promised land, Canaan. They rejected, going, uh, disobeyed God, and said, we're not going because we fear the giants and the people. So God says, okay, you're going to wander around the wilderness for 40 years until all those over 20 years old are dead. And so now they're, we're starting in the big wandering session in the wilderness. And we're away on a holiday weekend, but it's been hectic. We've been really busy. Today we did our exercise program twice. We went to church, we went to lunch, we visited my mother. We had an afternoon Bible study here. We had a birthday party. We had a game night, and it's late, and we're tired. So we're going to get right at it, and yeah. maybe you can open it up. Yeah. Father in heaven, thank you for the awesome privilege mm -hmm. you've given us to have brothers and sisters in the natural that we can visit, but they're also brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And we thank you so very much. And we pray your blessing upon them. And also on anyone who tunes in to our reading, may, as we read the word, may we be blessed. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse chapter 20. In the first month of the whole Israelite community arrived at the desert of Zin, and they stayed in Kadesh. There Miriam died and was buried. Now there was no water in the community, and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled and Moses, uh, with Moses and said, If only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Why did you bring the Lord's community into the desert, that we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no grain or figs grapevines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Now this is, I don't know how many times they grumbled before Moses, which God interprets as and grumbling before Why did they take us out of Egypt? And every single time they inflamed the wrath of God and he ended up striking people dead. And they, they just said, why didn't you let us die with our brothers and sisters? Because just the previous chapter, a bunch of them were wiped out for being faithless, and here they are grumbling again. Unbelievable. We're so like that, though, aren't we? God heals us and blesses us, and then we have a, a little bit of a struggle, and we're complaining about how hard life is. Anyways, verse 9. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord said to Moses, Take the staff, you and your brother Aaron, gather the assembly together, Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water, and you will bring water out of the rock to the community, so that they and their livestock can drink. Verse 9. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock, livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. What happened was God told him to speak to the rock. He struck it like he did the first time when he brought, got water out of the rock. And God said, you are not given the privilege to enter the promised land yes, he, because you did not do what I told you to It's very important to God that they do exactly as he says. And we see the significance of that when in the New Testament we've been reading about Jesus. And he always is very particular to do exactly what God says. What mm -hmm. verse did you read off? You didn't tell me. Yeah, finish right there. So I'm reading 13? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. These were the waters of Meredith where the Israelites quarreled with the Lord, and where he showed himself holy among them. Adam denied Israel's passage. 
Moses sent messages from the Kadesh to King of Edom, saying, This is what your brother Israel says. You know about all the hardships that we have come upon. Our forefathers went down into Egypt, and we lived there many years. The Egyptians mistreated us and our fathers. But when we cried out to the Lord, he helped our, heard our cry and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now we are here in Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your country. We will not go through any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway and not turn to the right or to the left until we have passed through your territory. Verse, whatever that is, little letters. But Edom answered, you may not pass through here. If you try, we will march out and attack you with the sword. The Israelites replied, we will go along the main road, and if we or our livestock drink any of your water, we will pay for it. We only want to pass through on foot, nothing else. You may not pass through, they said. Then Edom came out against them with a large and powerful army. So Edom refused to let them go through their ter territory. Israel turned away from them. The death of Aaron is next. The whole Israelite community set out from Kadesh and came to Mount Hor. At Mount Hor, near the border of Adam, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Aaron will be gathered to his people. He will not enter the land I gave the Israelites, because both of you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Get Aaron and his son Eleazar and take them up Mount Hor. Remove Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eliza. For Aaron will be gathered to his people. He will die there. Moses did as the Lord commanded. They went up Mount Haran into the sight of the whole community. Moses removed Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eliza. And Aaron died there on top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eliza came down from the mountain. And when the whole community learned that Aaron had died, the entire house of Israel mourned for him 30 days. Wow. Chapter 21. Very interesting. God says <clears throat> Aaron's time to die. Yeah. So, he went get things there, prepared, died. and they went up there, and he died. And I like the way they all call it gathered to his people. Yeah. And they mourned for him for 30 days. Arid destroyed. Chapter 21. When the Canaanite king of Arid, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming along the road to Atherim. He attacked the Israelites and captured some of them. Then Israel made this vow to the Lord. If you will deliver these people into our hands, we will totally destroy their cities. The Lord listened to Israel's plea and gave the Canaanites over to them. They completely destroyed them and their towns. So the place was named Hormoth. Hormoth. Did you get the clock when you started? The bronze snake. They traveled from Mount Horn along the route of the Red Sea to go around Edom, but the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why you will not agree? Why you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread. There is no water, and we detest this miserable land, or this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Verse 9. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, he lived. The journey to Moab. The Israelites moved on and camped at Oboth. Then they set out from Oboth and camped in Le Aborim, in the desert that faces Moab towards the sunrise. From there they moved on and camped in the Zered Valley. They set out from there and camped alongside the Arnon, which is in the 
which is in the desert extending into Amorite territory. The, Ar the Arman is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. That is why the book of the wars of the Lord say, Waheb in Sepha and the ravines, the Arnon and the slopes of the ravines that lead to the site of Ar and lie along the border of Moab. Boy, that's kind of hard to pronounce. I'm not doing a very good job on that today. Verse 16. Yeah. From there they continued on to Beer, and the well where the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. When Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing about it, about the well that the princes dug, that the nobles of the people sank, the nobles with scepters and staff. Then they went from the desert to Matana, from Matana to Nahaleo, from Nahaleo to Bamoth, and from Bamoth to the Valley of Moab, where the top of the Pisgah overlooks the wastelands. Defeat of Sihon and Og, verse 21. Israel sent messengers to say to Sihon, king of the Amorites, let us pass through your country. We will not turn aside into any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. <coughs> but Sihon would not let Israel pass through his territory. He mustered his entire army and marched out into the desert against Israel. When he reached Jehaz, he fought with Israel. Israel, however, put him to the sword and took over his land from the Arnon to the Jebok, but only as far as the Amorites, because their border was fortified. Israel captured all the cities of the, Am the Amorites and occupied them, including Heshbon and all its surrounding settlements. Heshbon was the city of Sion, king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and had taken from him all his land as far as the island. That is why the poets say, <coughs> Come to Hebron, and let it be rebuilt, and Shehan city be restored. For I went out from Heshbon, and blazed from the city of Shehan. It consumed Ar of Moab, the citizens of Ammon's heights. Woe to you, O Moab! You are destroyed, O people of Shehbah. He has given up his sons as fugitives, and his daughters as captives to Shihan, king of the Amorites. But we have overthrown them, and Heshbon is destroyed, all the way to Dibon. We have demolished them as far as Nephtha, which extends to Medaba. So Israel settled in the land of the Amorites. After Moses had sent spies to Jerez, the Israelites captured its surrounding settlements and drove out the Amorites who were there, and then they turned and went up along the road toward Bashab, Og, king of Bashab, Bashan, and his whole mighty army watched, marched out to meet them in battle at Ebdel. The Lord said to Moses, Do not be afraid of him, for I have banned him over, handed him over to you with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to Shion, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. So they struck him down to gather with his sons and his whole army, leaving them no survivors, and they took possession of his land. And that's the end of chapter 21. And now we and have the end of our reading in this the reading, first segment. The first segment. We're going to read <coughs> Matthew 22, which is about Balak, Summons Balaam, and Balaam was a false god. And then we're going to, or prophet, I mean, then we're going to turn to Mark and read 7, um, chapter one, 1 to 13, and just want to see going to read it. So we would like you to tune in to part 2 and finish the reading for today. And we notice that a lot of people are watching one or the other. The numbers aren't even. There's a lot of people. Um,